Dear viewer, in this video I try to experiment with spoken text. I think my pronunciation of English is below average, and in previous videos I solved that by including a lot of text in the videos. The viewer had to keep an eye on both the image and the text, which is quite tiring. This video will be voiced over, but it's not my voice you're hearing, it's Brian's, a text-to-speech synthesizer. I hope you like this and would really love to read what you think of this experiment in the comments. This is my current mini grinder. I use it a lot, and I am especially very satisfied with the diamond disc that can also be used to sharpen carbide inserts. But there is always something to be desired, and so here too. For example, I cannot sharpen HSS tool bits properly with this grinder, which I like to use because the shape can be freely determined. So here I am trying to build a better grinder. My wish list is as follows. Minimum 200 watt power. Variable speed between 2000 and 8000 revolutions per minute. Flat diamond disc. Table with cross guide and adjustable angle, 15 degrees clockwise 15 counterclockwise. An adjustable, plus and minus 60 degrees, tool holder with feed mechanism on the cross table. And it may also be nice to see. Because I didn't have a well-defined plan, I decided to build a prototype first. That should not cost too much, and after some searching I found this cheap 200 watt DC motor and a grinding wheel with diamond grit. Together with two ball bearings I paid about 30 euros for the complete machine, because I had the rest of the materials at home. These two pieces of 40mm free cutting steel will serve as a column for the grinding motor and as a bearing housing. I don't want to mount the grinding wheel directly on the slim 8mm shaft of the motor, that's not rigid enough. The tool bit in the fly cutter is adjusted to the diameter of the bearing housing to be made. The bearing housing is later pulled into this cavity of the column with an M10 bolt. This is where the bearing housing is made. It has light press fits for the bearings, and three threaded holes for the grub screws that connect the motor to this housing. If the prototype meets my requirements, I will use precision angular contact bearings with a correct preload later in the final build.
The spindle should of course run as true as possible, and a light press fit with the grinding wheel is desirable. After the hole is precisely sized with a small boring bar and runs completely true, I can slide it onto a true running axis to machine the other side. Time to assemble the motor and bearing housing. The bearings fit snugly and the whole thing runs very quietly. Off camera I checked the power consumption. The DC motor alone consumed 0.32 amps at 16 volts, and after assembly the consumption had risen to 0.39 amps. The whole runs very smoothly, even at higher RPM.
The table I'm making later, rests on a hinged column, which is dimensioned in such a way that the table edge directly at the grinding wheel does not move when the table is rotated. The gap between the table and the grinding wheel therefore always remains the same width. This column is being made here, where I initially assumed two pieces on either side of the table, but I adjusted that a bit later and soldered both columns together and positioned them in the middle under the table. Here the modified central column that will support the table. The position of the table can be easily adjusted with a I made the base plate off camera from a piece of 15 mm thick celeron, a modern type of phenolic. The material is strong, wear resistant and dimensionally very stable. The column for the grinder and the grinding table are recessed into the base plate and secured with two flat head bolts. The grinding table with the cross guides is also made off camera from Celeron, and will be provided with a steel top layer after mounting the tilting column.
One of the labor-intensive parts is the adjustable tool holder. A 15 mm thick aluminum disc is first turned to sides. Grooves will soon be made in this for the parts to be ground. A 6 mm thick rectangular piece of aluminum is cut with a trepanning tool. Always difficult, because the chisel has a tendency to dig into the workpiece. It is better to put the chisel upside down and let the lathe turn backwards. The disc should fit almost snugly in the hole without jamming. The degree markings are made on the dividing head with a somewhat wobbling, extended small milling cutter. The longitudinal guide is sawn to width with a saw cutter.
The tool holder is almost finished. Only the holes for the feed mechanism need to be drilled and reamed. The adjustable tool holder is ready to use. Let's test this small machine's ability to form and sharpen neat little tool bits.
a standard high-speed steel tool bit with 10-degree relief angles, and a threading bit with a 60-degree tip angle and a pair of scissors, all seem to be shaped and sharpened just fine. Let's see if a blunt tungsten carbide insert can be ground back to a usable condition. That tool bit cuts fine again, albeit now without a chip break. Okay, happy with the results so far. In the near future I will build this machine again, but with better materials and some minor adjustments. For example, I think the tilt mechanism of the table, although it works well, is not optimal. And I will add an item to my future wish list, an extension to precisely grind small spiral drills. 